Welcome to the Hacking Your Health podcast with Ben Canning and Dave Kennedy. Two guys heading out to hack body, mind, business, and beyond. We are here to provide a single source, bullshit-free guide to understanding your body and how you can live better for longer. back episode three and um, it's sunday so we're a couple of days behind um so we're just catching up so how's your week going good man uh the reason why we're behind is because of me uh you know i was uh i was out of town on vacation with uh with the families at watkins Glen in new york we did a, a camping trip up there where uh we had a an rv and and uh cook food and did a whole bunch of hiking and, and everything else it was uh it was awesome had a had a wonderful time with with the family and um you know, in, in normal fashion of myself, I, uh, I brought, uh, I, I went, went and bought a portable bench, uh, that can do inclines and normal bench and everything else. And I brought, uh, my, uh, my Bowflex adjustable weights, which go to 90 pounds in each. Um, so I worked out every day while I was there, got in a bunch of hiking and, uh, had a great time with it. In fact, uh, it was, it was funny. We were doing a hike, uh, in one of the, the canyons there. And, uh, I put a, my, my, I took my 40 pound vest and I wore it pretty much the entire time. So I just put it in my backpack. And so I was always walking with 40 pound vests and going up huge hills and everything else. It was just a awesome time. Awesome time for myself. Awesome time with my family, uh, getting, getting some nature in and, uh, had a good time. How about you? Yeah, good. Um, just a lot on with work, a lot of, um, chatting to people who have been listening to the podcast, um, and just taking over the world one, one day at a time. I just want to touch on something because obviously we're going to talk about mindset and you sent me a message whenever you got back about how your thought, your sort of thought process was with you being away and how that was going to affect your results and whenever you got back, what it turned out to be. So, I mean, over to you on that one. Yeah. So, you know, uh, when I, when I go out, you know, when I'm camping, this is the first time I've been camping in a long, long, long time. And, um, you know, we had a bunch of different families that we really went with a bunch of friends. And, you know, everybody else is cooking different foods and things like that. And, you know, my biggest concern was, well, you know, I, I'm very much in, into counting calories and making sure that my macronutrients are breaking down. I'm getting enough protein and everything else. And then within a certain amount of caloric intake. And uh, we're going to get into all that, by the way. Um, but, you know, when I when I went out there, you know, I was starting to kind of freak out a little bit because I was like, well, you know, I'm not going to be able to, to directly count calories like I used to. I'm going to have to kind of estimate in a lot of these things. And so I was concerned about, you know, um, weight gain when I was out there, most specifically around fat gain um, and, um, you know, kind of progressing back a little bit. And so, you know, what I did is, you know, I, I still still ate great, um, you know, and I, I tried to count as many calories as I possibly could, um, you know, with with what I had available. And uh, when I got back on the scale, I was literally two pounds lighter. So, uh, you know, it was <laughs> it, uh, it worked great. So and um, it was it's weird, too, like. Uh, you know, when you have 180 pounds um, of, of dumbbells, you know, that, that's some good weight, but, it, you know, you're not going to be able to do major big compound movements with that, right? You're not going to be able to do, you know, a 400-pound squat or, you know, 500-pound deadlift, which I'm not there yet. Um, I don't want to be, um, you know, but, uh, uh, you know, so, so you have to um, really focus on, you know, hitting your muscle groups really hard, you know, and doing more reps um, and, and things like that and more sets to, to get it going. And I just, you know, I got great workouts, but I mean, I'll tell you, I came back uh, – I came back uh, Friday, uh, and you know we got back I think around noon, and by one thirty I was already in the gym hitting the weights, and I was just a monster. I was like tearing apart the gym. It was it was awesome. So it was good to get back, and uh, you know that that mindset is is really important, right? It's it's uh, you know even if you don't have the the exact tools that you you need to to accomplish it, you can still absolutely do it, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's just it's just thinking in that way. So. You know, it would have been easy to you, for you to say, oh, I'm going to be away for a week. I'm going to be in the middle of nowhere. You know, I'll just take a week off or whatever. But you did what you could with what you had available. So obviously with the vest and with the dumbbells and stuff like that. With the food side of things, I guess, again, you know, it, the same thing. It could have been easy. But like, oh, I can't really track this. So I'm just going to sack it. I'm just going to leave it. But you didn't. You tracked what you could. And the flip side of that, you know, coming back and sort of seeing where we're at with your weight and how your body sort of responded to that it just shows that, you know, it's almost ingrained in you now that you know exactly what you need to do and you can sort of intuitively do it and sort of guesstimate like there or thereabouts in terms of what you need, like throughout the day, whether you're 
in a forest or whether you're at a meeting or whether you're, you know, traveling for work or whatever, like you can do it, you know, you can do it. Man. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's, 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 it's almost like I was just listening to my body that week. Right. You know, um, and, and I wasn't eating for myself. Granted, uh, I had beers at night for myself. Um, but you know, again, I counted those calories as I was doing it. Right. You know, I, I went heavy protein in the morning and the afternoons and you know, I was drinking beers at night and, uh, you know, it, it took in those, those carbs as, as, as necessary. So, you know, I, I don't, um, I was, I was talking to, to Scott and, and, and the, the, the messenger and he, you know, he posts a picture of, uh, I don't know, it was like called dragon's milk or something like that. It was like a, you know, 400 calorie per beer, you know, uh, you know I'm like, listen, I, I'm not going to get away with that. Right. You know, unless I'm going to have like one or two, maybe at the max, but, uh, um, you know, I was, I, you know, I was drinking those, uh, those, uh, seltzer water thingies, uh, and, and some, you know, yeah, yeah. and light beers like Corona lights or, you know, whatever. And you listen, you know, like those are hundred calories each, you know, you drink four of those, you're feeling good. And, and uh, that, that's about it. Right. And, and, and it's 400 calories that, you know, you, you can incorporate into what you're doing. So it's, it's, it's living that lifestyle, right. And having that mindset of, I'm not, I'm not really eating for a reward for myself. I'm eating to sustain my body and yeah, you can still have fun with it, but um, it was, it was really great to come back and, and, and kind of have that. And then, you know, and it was also great too, is the amount of energy that I had still, you know, throughout the week when I was hiking, I was like charging up hills with a 40 pound backpack and I'm climbing down, you know, massive, you know, uh, walls and things like that. It was, it was, uh, it was a great time. I had a, had a, had an awesome experience with it. And no competitive nature between you and the other guys that were there or anything like that. There, no. there isn't any competitive nature. They, they know, they know that I'm way stronger than them. Although there was something that really bothered me to be honest with you. So, um, there was a, uh, a, a, a can of, of salsa, um, that one of the, the girls couldn't open. And, uh, so she, they handed it to me first and I'm like, Oh, I got this. And I'm, I'm, I'm twisting, I'm twisting, I'm twisting, I'm twisting. I can't get the thing open. And, uh, you know, and someone else tries it and someone else tries it. I go back and I start twisting again. And then one of the other guys, Louie, he uh, grabs it and he's like, whoop, and opens right back up. I'm like, no, you know, I'm like, why am I lifting this much more? You know, so I was so upset with myself. Uh, I, I actually pulled like my pec muscle as I was doing it too. I was like, I, like, I was, like tweaked it. I was like, oh, this hurts. <laughs> so, so strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, it was no, no, no real competitive nature. Good, good group of folks. And, um, you know, it was awesome. You know, I'll tell you, um, old Dave would have just like hung out and sat in the chair and, you know, wouldn't have been out there. I was out playing basketball with my kids. In fact, uh, I beat my kid at, uh, at, uh, uh, um, uh, horse, which I was really proud of. Um, you know, hit, hit, the, hit the dagger three point shot, uh, and, uh, took him out, which, uh, you know, I've been still bragging about, about that every, every, every minute I get woke him up this morning and told him about it, but, uh, just kidding. But, uh, um, you know, but I mean, those types of things, you know, I was active out, out there hiking. Um, I was always, you know, I was energetic at cooking food in the morning. I'd wake up early in the morning and get my workout in. I'd cook the food for the kids and, 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 and for Aaron. Um, you know, it was just my, my perspective on things and my energy for things is, is completely different than it was, you know, a year or two ago, um, uh, when, when I wouldn't be like that, I'd, you know, sleep until nine, 10, 11 o'clock, you know, I'd get up, you know, Hey, go get some, you know, pop tarts or whatever. And, you know, that would be it. And then we'd, you know, sit around and, and probably wouldn't go on the hiking trips, you know? And so it's, it's really changed my, my ability to interact with my family and to be active with them as well. Yeah. And obviously that sets a good example for them as well. Did you find it sort of rubbed off with the other families and other guys you were with? Oh, yeah. Like they were looking at you going, holy shit, like I need to be on top of this. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, like everybody else is, you know, well, I mean, you know, everybody else was, was, you know, we were, we all went on the, the hikes together. Um, you know, we kept going. Um, it was, it was, it was just a great, you know, um, uh, bonding experience with, with a lot of different families that we're good friends with. And, uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, we stayed very active the entire time. We were all, you know, going back and forth and it may get a little competitive here or there, but it was, it was all, all in good fun. So it was, uh, it was, awesome. but at least, ha you know, having the ability to do that, do you know what I mean? If, if you're talking about old Dave, you know, whenever you were over 300 pounds, you couldn't be out doing those hikes. So you're not, you don't have the ability to make those sort of memories. Do you know what I mean? So having sort of taken charge of your health and sort of making that change, it allows you to do a lot more yourself. And then obviously with your family and, and other people. So you, you ultimately create this completely different life because you've decided to, to make that change. And it's not, and it's not just in, in, you know, going on vacations, right? It's, it's literally every aspect of your life. It's business. Uh, it's, uh, you know, what you do in, in, in your day-to-day -day lives when you wake up and, and what you do for your day. Um, it's your ultimate goals long-term, you know, all of these things start to come together uh, when you start to work on this mindset side. And, um, I've noticed a huge impact on all of those different things, 
um, and, and really helping with prioritization in life and, and family and, and, and friends and business and everything else, it all just kind of clicks and comes together. And that's, that's I think, the, the really cool part about all this is that, you know, when I first started, you know, I didn't think I was going to have enough time to, to be able to put the work in, right, to, to get the working out, workouts done. And you start to start small, let's just say it's a half hour twice a week, you know, and you're like, well, hey, I can do an hour. You know, look, Chris at Nagy is a good example of that, right? You know, you know, he's, you know, I think working out every single day. So, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's making the time for yourself and having that mindset to be able to spend that time for yourself. And I think that's an important piece that then everything else starts to fall in line with that, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that probably leads us. Uh, I know that we sort of want to cover a recap in terms of the topics, but I think that leads us nicely into mindset. Um, and I guess we could sort of start talking about having a fixed mindset for this versus a growth mindset. So what you're talking about before would have been, oh, I can't do this, or this is, you know, I'm limited in terms of my ability and this is just the way it is. Whereas, you know, as you develop and change your mindset and you have that sort of growth mindset, you're like, okay, well, I can learn to do this or I can manage this in a way, or I'll find a way to do it. Um, and I think that that's the, probably the biggest difference in the, the two types of mindset and the first time I sort of read about fixed versus growth mindset was the book that is just called mindset. Um, it's Dr. Carol Dweck, Dweck, I think it is. Um, and she outlines the difference obviously between having that fixed mindset and having the growth mindset. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's evident in people. Like you can tell whenever you have a conversation with people, it's just like, no, this is the way it is. And I don't have time and I can't do this. And I'm like, okay, well, good luck with anything that you're trying to do. I'm just going to go over here and, you know, make the time or learn what it, the way that I need to do it. Yeah. And, and we talk about the four pillars, right? So we talk about mindset, lifestyle, nutrition, and body, which are the, the four that you really believe, you know, is the, the, the concepts of being successful in this type of journey. Um, <clears throat> mindset is number one on that, right? Because without that mindset, without giving time for yourself, without, you know, putting the work in and, and, and having that mind to be able to do that, you know, all this is going to kind of fall through the cracks, right? If you don't have the right mindset of, of, of going and doing this and want to improve yourself and your health and your longevity and everything else, you know, it's not going to come through. And, um, and I think, you know, uh, one of the books that, that you had recommended to me early on when we first uh, started this training was the, the Aubrey Marcus, um, uh, hang on a second, I have it right over there. Uh, own the day. Own your day. day. Yeah. And, yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, in, 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 in Aubrey's book, you know, he does get into macronutrients and what you should eat and all those other things. But the large percentage of his book is, is focusing on your mind, right? And focusing on what your drive and passion is to, to want to improve yourself, right? And there's, there's so many studies out there medically, you know, and, and there's a, a lot of great podcasts. You know, there's the Huberman Labs podcast, which I heavily recommend. If you want to get down to the science of your body and understanding you know, things like testosterone impact and estrogen and, you know, um, you know, growth hormones versus, you know, your thyroid. I mean, just so many great pieces of research there from, from that. He's a neuroscientist from Stanford. I listen to his podcast religiously, you know, it, but there's so much science behind how our bodies work and how we've evolved over time. Right. You know, we, we went from, you know, being starving, you know, human beings because we didn't have enough food to us to be able to having as much food at our fingertips, high caloric intake, you know, food at our fingertips and not putting in any type of work whatsoever for our body. So we've evolved in a very unique way um, that that has put us into a, a, a essentially a cage, right? You know, we, we are caged animals, for lack of a better term. We're not in the wild anymore doing do, doing various things. And in order for our bodies to, to last and to be healthy, it needs to continuously, you know, be put through exercise and it needs to be out there hunting for food. I'm not saying you actually need to go hunt for food, but you know, you, you know, um, you know, that's why the things like intermittent fasting have such an impact on, on people because, you know, it's, it's, it's recreating that, that, that cycle of where humans, you know, would start to starve and your body then has to become more sharp. You know, it has to become more uh, precise on things in order to survive. So your body goes into overdrive to ensure that you can get the food that you need to. So, your body really is chemicals, it's science, it's literally how things work. And, you know, we have to recognize that if we want to be successful in our journey on this, we have to put ourselves in the right mindset to be able to do it. And for me, you know, um, I, I don't, I think I shared this early in the, in the maybe early in the first podcast, I can't remember if I did or not. But, you know, uh, I was at such a deteriorated state health wise. Um, and I was in my, you know, late 20s, um, I, I uh, was, you know, over 300 pounds, um, you know, was eating whatever, drinking whatever, not exercising. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the big wake up call for me uh, was I had to have heart surgery. 
and you know, 20, 29 years old and I'm having heart surgery and you go into a heart surgery thing and you're saying, Hey, this is kind of a medium risk type of operation. You know, we're going to basically fry a bunch of nerves in your heart and you know, hopefully it'll, it'll correct it. But to be honest with you, the reason why you're in this position is because of your weight. And you know, that was kind of the, the wake up call for me of, of, Hey, if, if I want to be here for my kids and watch them grow up and be a, a role model for my kids or to be, you know, a, a, you know, a, a, a husband, a, father, everything else that goes along with that, um, you know, I need to, to make some changes. And, uh, and so, you know, throughout that time, my, my mind really has, has been really trying to reprogram myself to be successful um, in my journey so that I can be there for my kids and my family. And, um, and there are like different stages, I think like ebbs and flows of that, you know, and, and the thing that, that really bothers me is I look back at my 315 pound Dave and I really had no way of fixing myself that I, I, I could really figure out, right? I would, I would try diets. I would try, um, you know, eating right. You know, I'd eat salads, you know, and I'd pound, you know, a bunch of like, you know, uh, you know, salad dressing on there. I'd be eating a thousand calories per, per salad, you know, and, and, you know, I tried eating healthy and all this other stuff. And, and, you know, I, uh, I remember I'd lose, you know, 15, 20 pounds and then it would come back and I'd gain 30 pounds. And it was just this this repeat cyclical effect of, of everything that was going on. And so mindset, I think, has a, a really big importance to it because one thing that, that has clicked with me in this past year working with you, Ben, um, is this is something that I can do successfully for the rest of my life. It's not something that uh, I, you know, I, I'm going to revert back to because I have the tools necessary to, to tweak it, right? You know, if, if I decide, hey, I don't want to train for the next six months, okay, you know, then I know I need to eat less. I know I need to do this. I know I need to do that. That's not going to happen, by the way. Um, you know, but but I have the right tools to be successful. Um, you know, moving forward as as things go along. And you know, my whole mindset is now is is how do I fit, you know, my time in to do all the stuff. And that's that's that. And, and and I'm always thinking about that, right? It's like okay, when I wake up, you know, people talk about time time management. Well, you know, we all have busy schedules. You know, I run a, a number of different businesses. Um, and you know, obviously with family, I talk about the guinea pigs. Um, you know, we, we have uh, a lot of things going on today and everybody's different, right? I'm not saying mine's, you know, more important or less important or more busy or less busy. We're all busy. Um, and so when I wake up in the morning, you know, my, my routines are a little bit crazy, so don't go off of this yet, but you know, I do uh, orange theory hit training three times a week, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, which is my, my cardio. And then I do, you know, lifting, you know, three days on one day off basically. So usually around six times a week, I'll be lifting. And so I have to figure out how do I fit those in plus the steps that I get, you know, so I get around 15,000 steps a day. Um, and so as part of that, you know, when I wake up in the morning, okay, I'll go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'll go super early in the morning to hit training to get my cardio in. And then, you know, I'll replenish and eat and get my glycogen restores all, all good to go again. And then, you know, later on in the day when I either have an hour break, that could be during lunch or as soon as work ends, maybe four or five o'clock, you know, I can go hit the gym for an hour, right? And get my, my lifting in. Days that I don't have Orange Theory, you know, I, I can wake up in the morning and go get my lift in, or, you know, first thing in the morning. So it's just putting in the time necessary, but having that mindset that that is important and it's something that I have to do every single day um, is is the switch that you kind of have to make. And you gradually get there as you start to go through this and you don't give yourself any excuses because, you know, I'll, I'll wake up in the morning and be like, man, I really don't want to go to Orange Theory this morning. But my mind is like, hey, but you're going to do it. I mean, you're, you're, you're not going to stop. You're not going to go back. You know, like it, it's this is something you have to do. Um, this isn't an option like, like you wake up in the morning because you have to go to work. You have to go to work. You know, you have to go and work out. That's how you should be thinking about this as you go along, right? Yeah, I think if we go right back to whenever you said that you had to have the heart surgery, obviously, and generally whenever I'm having conversations, you know, with potential clients or with clients, there is one thing that scares the shit out of them that they're like, I need to sort this out right now. And that is where you have that sort of shift in mindset. And I think probably the thing about you, and I would imagine, you know, just given your success with business and everything else come along, you probably have always had that growth mindset and it maybe just didn't transfer into sort of health and fitness because you didn't have the tools or you didn't really have the concern. But then once that became a concern, you had to work that out. So, you know, you're saying you tried all these different diets and you failed at them, but you were willing to then try something else and try something else until you ultimately found something that worked that has led us down the path that we're on now. And I think, you know, that that is the difference in terms of, you know, you could have just went, oh, I'm going to have to get heart surgery. There's nothing I can do about it. I tried keto. It doesn't work. And then you get people who are like, I've tried everything. I'm like, 
you haven't tried any, everything because you know you've maybe tried four different diets that you find on the internet that don't work for you and now ultimately you're just totally sacking the whole thing off but you've obviously had the mindset of like right i need to do this i just need to find out the way to actually do it and yeah okay you had some success with everything that you've done and like you said you know it got you to a certain point and it's just a case of building upon that every time that you know you hit that roadblock or you hit that failure it's like right okay this has got me from here to here now this is not working what am i going to do next and how can i sort of continue on this journey yep and and, and it's it's been a non-stop struggle right you know um you know you're aware of this but you know and this is something that we haven't shared on the podcast yet is you know when i was at, kind of at my rock bottom point um of weight and I was doing, um, I remember I was doing the Shanti Insanities. I remember even like, you know, working out in my, uh, we had a, a big conference that we we ran. And I remember working out in the hotel room doing the Shanti thing, you know, during the afternoons. And, you know, I was really trying everything I possibly could to, to lose the weight. And I, you know, again, bounce down, bounce up. And so, you know, I've been meeting my doctors trying to figure out, hey, what's, what can I do to figure this out? Because I, I you know, I'm just, it's a never ending battle. Like I'm, I'm, you know. You know, yeah, okay, I, I get down to 285. I'm like, yes, I get to 285. And then a month later, I'm 315 again. You know, it's just like this, this constant back and forth that I was fighting with my body with. And, you know, I, I think my mindset wasn't there because, you know, I, I, for one, I, my nutrition definitely wasn't there, right? You know, portion size is a huge thing. Um, how much, you know, food you're putting in is a huge thing. Eating for yourself, not for your body. Um, but, you know, at that point in time, uh, this was in, I don't know, I want to say I was... 32 or 33, um, I decided to go through uh, what's called a gastric sleeve bypass or gastric sleeve surgery. And um, that's where they basically, you know, take your stomach and then they, you know, so it's a laparoscopic procedure and then they, they cut your stomach in half basically. So you have this small sleeve that goes down. So instead of a, a football looking stomach, you have this basically like a narrow pouch that kind of goes down into your thing. So you still kind of have a stomach, but it's kind of not really there. And, um, you know, I dropped substantial weight uh, with that. Right. So I went from, you know, 315 down to 185. Uh, and I was like literally bone skinny where, you know, Aaron was complaining that like, literally, dude, you're all just like, you know, bones and everything else. And one thing that the sleep did for me was it gave me a tool very much like nutrition, very much like everything else, um, that allowed me to, to control the portions of food and calorie intake that I had. And, you know, that was, that was successful for quite a while. Right. Um, I dropped a lot of weight, but again, the, the lifestyle wasn't there. And eventually, you know, I started creeping up again in weight and I started creeping up more in weight and I started going more and more weight. And, you know, that's when I, I hit, like, I, I would say the very rock bottom, right? Because I had gone through a surgery where, you know, it's supposed to correct this and it didn't. And I was now at a point to where I was at my heaviest again. I was, you know, I was at 220, um, which, you know, is not 315, but it's not 185. Uh, and I also didn't, you know, I was, didn't like the way I looked. I wasn't confident about myself, you know, you take my shirt off and it was just, you know, just fat and flub and everything else. You know, I, I wasn't confident in, in who I was again. And again, that, that healthy lifestyle that I wanted to live wasn't there. It was again, back to old Dave. It's just Dave couldn't eat as much. So I figured out other ways to go and do it. Right. And that's when I reached out to you. I was just like, dude, I, I can't figure this out. I can't, what am I doing wrong? You know, I, I got a friggin' surgery done to, to help this and I'm still going up. And, you know, that's really where, you know, the, 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 the thing clicked, right? You know, like everything just kind of clicked in the place of, well, this is what you're doing wrong and this is what we need to do to actually go and correct it. And I think all of those things, all, you know, kind of my journey through my own body. I mean, again, you know, as a kid, obese as a kid, you know, I, I think well, as soon as I started hitting seven or eight, um, you know, I just shot up in weight, um, you know, I was 16, 17 years old, I was, you know, 280 pounds, um, you know, and then when, when I got into the Marines, you know, luckily I thinned out quite a bit, um, but I had to go to um, what they call PCP, which is physical conditioning platoon, or also nicknamed the pork chop platoon. Um, so I had to go to boot camp for an extra couple months just to pass because I was, you know, overweight and couldn't do the pull ups um, and do the running. <clears throat> and so, you know, the Marines were, were good because I was literally you know, running every day and working out, but again, no structured program in, at all. And so as soon as I got back on the Marines again, I shot back up to my heaviest, right? And so that, that struggle with obesity, the struggle with my weight, the struggle with my health um, has always been there throughout my whole life. And this is really the first time in my life I can honestly say that it's not a struggle for me anymore. It's not something that I'm, cons I'm not concerned about. Not, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm concerned about in the back of my head, but I trust myself now to where I'm at a point to where I know I can be successful. I am successful with it. And honestly, it's the, the best shape I've been in my entire life. But most importantly, uh, I feel the best that I ever have in my entire life. And, and that's, that's the most important thing 
I think anybody can take out of this is that, you know, when you're making time for yourself and you have that right mindset to make that switch, you can, you will be successful at it. You, you need to trust yourself because you've been successful in other things in your life. You know, it's just a matter of, of framing it the right way, doing it the right way, understanding your body and then moving forward on it. Yeah. I think the, the confidence thing is the main thing. And that's, you know, obviously as we we've, we've spoke about before, our journeys are opposite, but on a confidence level, they're probably the same. And if I think back to, you know, when, whenever I started training and I've talked about being a piss head and everything else that comes along with it, like that was me trying to sort of create a false confidence. Cause obviously, you know, whenever you're drinking and alcohol, you know, it creates this false confidence persona, whatever else. But as I sort of got into training and started to look after my body and felt better ultimately and looked better and, you know, started to actually fit into my clothes and you talk about being skinny. Like I was that skinny guy. I'm going to really get this confidence. It starts to seep into every other aspect of your life. So whether that's, you know, in relationships, in friendships, in work, in business, whatever it is, and it allows you to sort of develop that sort of growth mindset alongside it. So you're then confident and you're in this positive cycle of, right, okay, well, I can actually do this. And, you know, I was able to change from being the skinny person to being, you know, slightly in shape or being the overweight person to being in shape again. And it's that sort of confidence that comes along with it. And I think I've said this a couple of times and I, I still to this day don't know in which order they come in, but I feel like if you have a strong body, you have a strong mind too. I don't know whether they just go hand in hand and they maybe like, just compliment each other. Um, but I think, you know, and you, you can back this up, you know, if you feel good and if you feel strong in your training and your gym, you know, you feel confident and you feel strong in your mind that you can sort of take on any challenge. Do you know what I mean? It's like almost like a, a mental resilience that you develop that, you know, shit hits a fan with work or shit hits a fan with life. You're like, right, I know I can handle it. And it's, it's like you said, you trust yourself, you back yourself to handle it. And, and like, that's probably, it's the hardest thing for me to convey whenever I'm speaking to someone on an initial coaching call, because if I'm telling you, they come like, oh yeah, you know, I want to lose two stone. And I'm talking about, you know, how much confidence they're going to have and you know, how much better their life's going to be. And they're like, you've actually lost the plot. And I'm like, no, trust me. Like if you've been there, you will understand, but they just don't get it. And then you get a couple of months down they're like, man, you were right. And I'm like, fuck yes. <laughs> there's the F-bomb. There's the F-bomb. I'm yes. for it. <laughs> Louis, yeah. Louis owes me 20 bucks. Just kidding. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, dude, but yeah, so, you know what I mean? Like you, you, you've been there, do you know what I mean? And it's sort of, you know, we talk about confidence and you talk about having the confidence to take your shirt off at the pool and have the confidence, you know, obviously you do a lot of public speaking and you know, everything that comes along with business and work and presenting. So, you know, it's entirely different. And even if you want to touch on if or how that's changed in the past year or beyond in terms of like how it's, what it's allowed you to do with business or with work or whatever. Yeah, it's 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 such an interesting uh, uh, topic that you bring up here around confidence, right? Um, you know, I, I would say, I, you know, prior to me working out, I was confident in my work that I did, right? Business, um, and and that's that's led me to be successful, you know, at, at what I do. Um, but also, it's it's a humility thing as well. You know, I recognize that, you know. Uh, very fortunate to be in the position I'm in and want to help others and try to, to try to make them better. So my drive has always been more towards that. And, you know, I think you know, when you look at, at going back a year to now, I'll give you a prime example, just, just recently, um, you know, when, when we went to the, the, um, Watkins Glen park, you know, I remember when we went to this, this, we found this really beautiful, uh, waterfall and it was, uh, uh, probably a bad idea to go there because you had to like basically go down this like steep, massive, dangerous hill and, uh, you know, we have obviously kids with us and, you know, uh, our wives and everything. And so we created like an adult um, pulley system, basically, of, of, you know, like getting the kids down, you know, safe and sound, which is, you know, we're fully expecting one of our kids is definitely going to get a broken bone or something like this, right, as we're going down. Um, but we get down there and it's basically like our own private waterfall, which is like the coolest thing ever, right? Because it's like, the, you know, all water's coming down. It's like five foot, you know, pond at the bottom, you know, all natural. It was just an incredible um, spot. And, uh, you know, I remember, you know, like old day would have just sat there and watched the kids play and everything else. And, you know, no, I took my shirt off. I felt great. Now there's a problem is, is, uh, uh, that I have is that, you know, I have, uh, tan arms, but my entire chest is like as white as it could possibly be. So, you know, it's like beaming off the sun. That's the only thing I, I, you know, I, I worry about, but, uh, but, you know, I felt confident going out there. I was swimming. I was having a great time. And, and, and that plays in every aspect of my life that, that, I, while that might be a, an example of, of physical appearance, 
that absolutely plays on the mental side of the house. Like um, I was just telling Ben yesterday, I sent him a text message. I'm like, man, I was just like walking down the street. And I just felt like, I'm just like, like, man, I just got like a whole bunch of muscle. This is cool. You know? And it's just like, you know, your confidence goes up. Um, your, your ability to, to do certain things and, and have confidence in yourself goes up. Um, it, 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 it definitely plays in business as well. You know, you mentioned there's the, the mind muscle connection that that you have um, with your body and with your muscles. That is absolutely a thing. Um, you know, there's a lot of science behind that. And, you know, the, the healthier you are, the better ability that you have for your mind to function as well. And I think in our industry, you know, we, we all, you know, I always make, you know, I remember I would always brag about, you know, being up at two, three, four o'clock in the morning coding and doing these other things. I wasn't taking care of my body and I was not being the best I could possibly be in that, that side of the house because my, my, my body wasn't healthy and we really don't take care of ourselves in our industry, right? It's a high stress, you know, high amount of hours, everything else that goes along into it. And so I think with, with that mindset and my ability to, you know, know that I'm going to be successful at what I do. Um, has really given me a confidence boost in every aspect of my life, whether it's what I'm lifting or when I'm out and just in public, uh, you know, whether I'm, um, you know, going out with my family, every, every aspect of my life has been improved because I've made time for myself to get to this position that I'm at now. And, 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 and while I'm in this position I'm at now, I'm still not where I want to be at. Right. I want to continue to grow in this, this thing. I want to get bigger. I want to get stronger. I want to get healthier. I want, you know, like, I ran a, a five minute mile, uh, you know, at, at Orange Series on a, on a treadmill. So it's not as great as, you know, going, it's a little bit harder to do it in, in, in their side. But, you know, a five minute mile at 39 years old is incredible. Um, you know, and, and I don't want to be a long time runner. That's not that's not what I am. But the fact that I can accomplish that or the fact that I'm hitting a 305, you know, uh, you know, bench press or, you know, I'm almost at the 505 um, pound squats. Um, I will get today. Yeah. Today's today, the day. Today's gonna be the day. Let's give you the day. Um, <laughs> I'm going to call Ben. I'm like, hey, I pulled my back out. I'm not going to be able to. <laughs> but, um, you know, having that type of, of drive and success at what you're doing and always wanting to push yourself better makes you want to push yourself better in other aspects of your life as well. And, I mean, just the confidence that I have walking into a room, it's, it's, it's incredible, right? Uh, and, and there's absolutely something to be said about that. Um, I, I just, it, it's such a weird feeling because I've never had as much confidence as I had before myself and what I can do and everything else than I have now today. I'm definitely my top yeah. nine. Yep. <laughs> I think the confidence thing is massive and, and I can, you, you know, you're talking about walking into a room. In my experience, people who, who are confident in their ability and in themselves, they, they carry a presence. So, you know, when they've come into the room, do you know what I mean? They're not shying away. They're in, they can deal with any situation because they know that they can. And I think, you know, I actually want to touch quite, quite a bit in terms of the, like the career and the business side, because I, I do want that to be a big part of what, what we're going to share. And I've had a couple of conversations recently about that, that, you know, maybe for the past 10, 15, 20 years, these guys have focused solely on their career. They wanted to be successful in that, which is obviously great. Like 100%, whatever it is that you're doing, you want to be successful. Like that's totally great. And they almost get to the point where they, you know, they are, they have success, whether they own businesses or whether they've, you know, come up the ladder in terms of where they work or whatever. Um, but they get to this point and they, they look at themselves in the mirror and what they see doesn't resemble or it doesn't coincide with someone who looks successful. Do you know what I mean? Like they have like success in the career and they're like frustrated that they can't have that success. It's not that they, you know, they maybe did train a bit or, you know, they've tried it on and off and didn't have any success. And it's almost like a frustration that they can't get to where they want to be or get their body, you know, physically where they want to be in terms of their health, but also how it looks. And they're, you know, they're seeing this person in the reflection. I mean, like, how can I be this successful in one area and a total shambles? in this other area and that's whenever they come on they're like right look i've focused on my career i've got it to where i want to be you know how can i sort of how can i improve myself and improve my health and ultimately again i had this conversation during the week you know what use is it to spend 15 or 20 years building up a career and then you're so fucked up with your health that you know two years later you're dead because you haven't looked after yourself and you've put everything into the career you know it's totally totally useless yeah and 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 that's you know when I talk to a lot of people about their struggles, right. It's, it's, it's again, taking that time for yourself, um, that, that they don't do it's, it's about everything else. And I'm too busy to be able to put time on myself and I feel guilty putting time in for myself, you know, and, and when we talk about putting time for yourself, you're not, you're not being greedy or, you know, 
self-centered about wanting to go out and walk in a park or to put a run in in the morning or to at lunch breaks, you know, going and getting a lift in that's, those are things that, that, you know, we all get busy with our day-to-day lives. You know, we have kids in sports, we have this, we have that. Um, <clears throat> we have to be able to take the time for ourselves to be able to say, listen, this is the, the type of stuff that I need to do in order for me to still continue to be successful and everything else that I'm doing it. And, and I think we lose track of that because we're so busy in our day-to-day lives, whether it's, you know, we're on our phone or, you know, we have business meetings all day long and we, you know, are just booked from nine to five and we literally don't have time to go and pee. I've been there, you know, it's, uh, it, you know, um, you have to figure out how to take time for yourself, one for your brain, just to relax. I mean, I, I the most Zen moments I have is going out and going for a walk for myself, right? It, it, not a, not a destroy myself, you know, not a, you know, I'm going to go out and kill my body. I'm just going to go out to the park and walk, you know, and, and that, that to me is like one of the most amazing comfort things that I have. I've been really getting into the sauna. I also enjoy that. I throw some like, you know, massage music on or whatever. And, you know, like, you know, got like, like a little light that supposedly does something, which I'm sure doesn't do anything, but the sauna itself is, is an amazing experience. You know, it, it's, it's making that time for yourself the same way that you put into your career or that you put into your family to be successful in those areas is also what you have to reflect on and do for yourself. And, and, and hopefully I didn't scare anybody when I said, Hey, I do cardio three times a week and I do six, you know, don't, don't, don't baseline what I'm doing, right? I gradually moved up to that because I, I want to get to a certain point, right? But just starting off small with yourself and saying, listen, I'm just going to go for a walk. Like walks are fantastic. You can burn like seven, 800 calories in like an hour, an hour and a half just by like walking. Right. You know, like that's great. You know, like go and go outside and, and get your heart pumping a little bit, you know, whether it's hit training where you're just like, you know, sprinting for a couple seconds and you take a step back and you sprint for a couple more seconds, whatever. If you can just dedicate some time for yourself and start to put yourself in that mindset of, of, you know, Hey, I can do a little bit more this week, or maybe I can do a little bit more this week, or I can do, or maybe not, you know, but just getting that time for yourself and making yourself successful um, is the same thing that you can apply to what you do in business. And that's, you know, really the approach that I took at, at my business side is, you know, when I go in on something, um, I go all in, right. That, that my, my, my wife, you know, is, is she, she, she can see the indicators of things of when, like, there's a, another great example this week, you know, we, um, we went camping and she looks at me and she says, tell me this isn't an all in thing again, you know, like for the whole camping thing. Cause you know, she, you know cause I started looking at campers and like, you know, well, you know, like, so we can go <laughs> and she, had, she actually had a great time and we're, we're looking at, you know, possibly doing more camping, but um, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where like, if, if I set my mind to it, I fixate myself on that specific topic and I try to be the best that I possibly can on it. And I can't do that with everything, right? You know, like you can't be like, Hey, I'm going to be, I'm, for one, I'm never an expert, but you know, you, you can't be, you know, a hundred percent in everything across all the, all the time. You just, you just, it's not going to work. But you know, when I look at something like fitness, I say, well, this is something that is my new lifestyle. Okay. Just like bourbon was my, my previous new lifestyle. And I'm not saying it as a bad hat, you know, like I, I wasn't like drinking a whole bunch of bourbon and getting hammered every night. You know, I, I enjoyed bourbon. I enjoyed having a, you know, a sip of a bourbon, you know, a couple of times a week or something like that, you know, um, and understanding the science behind it and, and how bourbon's made and all this other stuff, you know, you take an interest in it and, and recognize that, Hey, this, this fitness journey that you can, you, you're going to go on or that you're already on is something that I'm going to continue to do for the rest of my life. Because, you know, again, when I'm hit, when I hit 40, when I hit 50, when I hit 60, I don't have to feel like shit. You know, like I can feel great. I can feel awesome. I can feel strong. I can feel confident. Um, I can have all these things so that when I get older, you know, my entire body isn't falling apart. It's, it's along there with me, um, you know, in this journey of life, uh, and, and, and I'm going to be successful at it. And I think, you know, when you look at that and you apply that to business, you apply it to anything else, you can, you go all in and the things that you, you need to do to make it successful. It's all about finding that time and making your passion, your drive and, 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 and focusing on it. I think that's the most important piece there. Yeah. I think a couple of things to note is, you know, the thing that about you and about business, like you're leading by example in your industry in general, like not even just you know, within the companies, you know, you're literally by example and people say, you know, if anybody should have an excuse to not do it, it's you because you know, you're trying to do everything else and juggle everything else. And I laugh. I'm like, I feel like you have 36 hours in every <laughs> single day that you do. And you're like, listen, these things I'm like, oh. <laughs> You know, you're leading by example, and that is not only for your family, but also for your employees and, you know, peers and other people in the industry. So you need to sort of recognize that. 
the other thing as well is I think, you know, with success in career and with success in business, in any experience that I've had with someone, you know, who is a high performer in any of those fields, that's a transferable skill. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it, you know, going all in or, you know, wanting to find out the answer or wanting to, you know, optimize whatever it is, that is something that you can put into anything. You just need the right tools and a bit of direction. And whether it is a case of, you know, you just become obsessed and you do the research yourself, then yes, 100%. Or if it's a case of you want to work with someone and get a coach, of course, like that, you know, I don't want to say it skips the steps, but it definitely gives you that sort of a bit of direction with it. I think having having that knowledge of, okay, right, well, if I can do this, then there's no reason that I can't do this. And we don't even need to just talk about fat loss. Like it's with anything, if it's a case of, you know, it's a performance-based goal or if it's muscle building, like we're both doing at the minute, or if it's strength that we're going to move into from tomorrow, like it covers every single goal. And it's just knowing that, okay, right, if I know the direction I'm going to go in, then I need, I just need to start. And it's just that, that sort of start thing. And you talking about you doing three, three days cardio and six days lifting that obviously has happened over time. And I think that's where we can sort of relate it back to, to like the compound interest side of things. It's just a case of over time, gradually improving. And it's like you said, you know, how can I be 1% better today than I was yesterday? So it's not like, oh my God, I need to lose a hundred pounds. It's such a big task. It's like, how can I slowly get towards that goal? Or if I want to put on a hundred pounds, which I'm nearly there. I feel like I'm nearly maybe about 20 pounds. If I put on another 20 pounds, I'll have put on a hundred pounds in my whole, my whole training journey, which is cool. Um, but it's about just making the decision to do it and go, right, look, I'm going to commit to this and I'm going to do it. And you know, whether it's a case of you go, I'm going to give myself six months or I'm going to give myself a year, you can definitely do it. And it's just a case of starting and committing to it and going for it. Well, I think, you know, we often think, you know, well, Hey, Ben's the trainer. He knows everything, but your journey has been absolutely incredible. Right. I mean, for you to kind of, change what you've done uh, and to to transform yourself, your body, your mindset, and then apply that to others um, is is a huge monumental feat, right? And, and, and you know, you, we always talk about how, how we have differences, you know, in, in you know, what we struggle with, but they're, they're the same struggles, right? You know, it's, it's how do I get to a position where I'm comfortable with myself, I'm comfortable with my body, I'm comfortable with my lifestyle, I'm comfortable with everything else that goes out there. And it's what a lot of other people struggle with. And you mentioned, you know, trying to lose 100 pounds, right? Um, you know, he, the thing I think most people really fail to understand with with the whole weight loss, you know, aspect of things is that, you know, it, it's a journey to get there, right? You know, it took you several years, you know, 20 years, 30 years more to get to where you're at today. You know, it's not going to be a tomorrow thing that you're you're now the, the mind and body that you want to be. I think when I first, you know, joined with you, I'm like, Hey, I want to look like this guy in like six months, right? And you're like, "Hey, sounds good. Let's, 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 we're gonna try, all right?" You know, so you know, you didn't you didn't say no, but you said like, hey, "We're gonna try, right?" This guy, you know, obviously been a, a bodybuilder his entire life, right? You know, it's not gonna happen in six months, but you know, on this journey, you know, you can accomplish whatever you want to. You know, for folks that are struggling with fat loss, you know, again, you, you, it comes down to everybody says, "Well, you just got to do more cardio. You just got to do more cardio. You just got to do more cardio." Well, no, you, it's, it's not about cardio. Like cardio, yes, increases your, you know, your, your caloric burn of, of, of what you're, you know, um, uh, using as part of, of exercise. But again, if you don't have the nutrition piece of there, you don't have the mindset, right. It's going to be that, that flux back and forth of things that happen. And, you know, what, one thing that I really learned a lot of is, is the importance of strength training, right. And, and how that impacts everything else, right. The more muscle you have, the more calories you burn, you know, the more calories you burn, you know, the, the, the less fat you have, you know, and, and it's just, it's just like that, those components, there are things that are just completely lost in these diets and these fads and everything else that goes there. And again, I'm not knocking diets. There's a lot of great science. Yeah, we are. We are. <laughs> <laughs> we are kind of, yeah. I mean, it, if, if you have a good structure in place and you want to like tweak it and play around with diets, I think they could be great. Right. You know, for like intermittent fasting or keto or whatever you want to do. If you, I was listening to um, the Joe Rogan podcast uh, and they had a, a nutritionist on there, a uh, doctor, uh, talking about the, the ketogenic diet. And she's talking about how miserable her life is uh, on this keto diet. But yet, you know, she's much more, you know, um, sharp, you know, her, you know, it, it's basically going back to like the, you know, prehistoric days, you know, or, you know, where we're, you know, just eating meats and that's it. And our body has to basically adjust and be sharp to be able to hunt for our food. And, and so there's, there's, you know, cool things you can kind of tweak and do, but again, you know, if you don't have a program in place for yourself, though, that that's like a, to me, I feel like diets are like expert level, you know, changing things to see if you can maximize your performance or things like that. 
um, versus, you know, a program for people to lose weight long term. And, and, and I think that, again, your mindset has to be there first and everything else kind of comes along with it. Yeah, I want to go back to, so again, I was on a call last week. Um, and James, if you're listening, I appreciate you so much for this analogy because it made so much sense. So we we're talking about that cardio and the output thing and, and, you know, training and building muscle. And the way he put it to me, he was like, if you're doing cardio, if you think of it in terms of like a car, so if you're doing cardio, it's just like you're continuously burning fuel. But if you build muscle, it's building an engine that can process more fuel. So he said that if you think about it, like a V8 engine, like a real angry, like burns a lot of fuel engine, like you're trying to build that when you're building muscle versus like a four cylinder that's just, you know, it just like, it's very efficient, whatever. Um, and that's what we're trying to do with the, with build a muscle like okay yes cardio has its place but i said to him as well as like you know people often ask me you know supplements wise like what's the best fat burner build some damn muscle yeah that is the best yeah. fat burner that you can do because you will literally burn more calories not you know fat day burning to day. pills they do not work it just doesn't work <laughs> don't do that <laughs> yeah so i thought i thought that was a good analogy um it, it, you know, it makes a lot of sense. And, you know, again, what you're saying about diets is taking parts from it and sort of tweaking it to fit you. And I think I've said this to you before, you know, if we think about intermittent fasting, or even if we think about, you know, ketogenic diet, or even think about just having protein and fats, I'll know myself that, say, for example, when I used to work on the gym floor, if I started at six and I was working right through to one o'clock, I wasn't going to eat before I started work because I knew by like nine o'clock I'd be starving. So I was like, right, okay, well I can fast until like one o'clock. Now I didn't all of a sudden I'm doing intermittent fasting. I was like, I'll just push my eating window back because I know that I'll be fine if I don't eat. But if I do, then I'll be starving by nine o'clock. The flip side of that as well is now, even if I know that I've got a busy morning, even the mornings that I do to my check-in replies and stuff like that, I'll not have a carb source until later on in the day because it allows me, you know, I know my own body now at this stage that if I just have, you know, a protein rich or fat protein and fat rich meal first thing, but I have that mental clarity to get more work done. Whereas I know that once I start to introduce carbs, my body just, it's not that it slows down. I just, I'm not as focused and I get distracted a lot easier. So that's just my own personal experience. So, you know, there's two things from two different water and I brand that is diets that I don't do those diets. I'm not, I don't do intermittent fasting. I, I'm not on keto, but I can take aspects from them because I've learned over time what my body needs and, and what I can actually benefit from from those. Yeah, your um, your analogy, of the, the the analogy of the car um, is a good one, right? You know, when I first started with you, <clears throat> I think my calories were like at like two thousand or something like that, right? Um, and excuse me, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> man, hang on a second. All right, I'm good. Sorry about that. We'll have to cut that part out, uh, you know, <laughs> or, or not. You just keep it, keep the awkward sound. There. Yeah, keep it in fine. That's fine. Um, lost my voice there for a second. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think I started like 2,000 calories, right? And I remember like when we started increasing to like 2,200, 2,300, my weight was like kind of fluctuating a little bit back and forth. And now I'm, you know, I'm at 3,400 calories and I'm losing weight. It's like, my my gosh, you know, this is crazy. I can, I, I literally can eat whatever I want. Now, granted, you want to do it in a structure where you're getting, you know, understanding what you're eating and all that good stuff. You know, for me, I prefer doing um, carbohydrates. Well, so a, a lot of times if I'm doing like HIIT training or things like that, or if I'm uh, working out first thing in the morning, I prefer to do it in a fasted uh, stomach. And there's actually some good science behind that, where <clears throat> the time window of your body to get into a fat burning phase is drastically reduced on a fasted stomach. So for example, you know, if you're doing like, you know, um, high intensity interval training or uh, things to that effect, you know, or, or, or um, you know, I think what they call level three um, type workouts, you know, you know kind of like you know, cardio type type workouts. Um, you know, if you're, if you're, if you've eaten beforehand, you know, it's basically like a 90 minute window for you to get into that fat burning phase, which is kind of like a, hey, your body's going to continuously burn fat for a couple of days afterwards. Um, you know, versus if you're in a fasted stomach, it's in between like 45 minutes to 60 minutes, right? So there are some great things with, with working on a fasted stomachs. Um, so, but I, I usually won't eat in the morning, um, you know, when, before I work out, as soon as I, I work out though, I'll, I'll typically, you know, um, get a combination of both complex and, and, and simple carbohydrates, uh, as well as protein. So I mix, you know, like I'll do like a bagel, for example, with whole, you know, whole butter, not that net margarine stuff, um, you know, and real, real proper butter. Real That's butter. what I'm about. Fat butter, like yeah, the yeah. fattest butter you can find. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll sprinkle some Himalaya salt on there. Uh, to recover some of the sodium, 
and then I'll do, you know, like a banana and then I'll, I'll have a, a protein shake or, you know, um, some, um, Greek yogurt. I usually do like two things of Greek yogurt, 24 grams of protein in that, um, 160 calories. So, you know, with that, you know, it's, 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 you know, basically planning my, my mornings to my body. So I, I know I need to have, you know, enough energy kind of clean burn throughout the day. And that's kind of how I cycle myself through, but you know, <clears throat> you, you get to understand your body a lot more uh, and what works for you and what doesn't, you know, you, you don't prefer carbs in the morning. Uh, you know, I, I prefer carbs after I work out to give me that kind of bump and to have that clarity, you know, my, my body works a little bit differently. So, you know, it's, it's just, you know, you get to that point of refinement, uh, which is really cool because you kind of say, Oh, well, well, crap, you know, like I, I can eat this and you can eat that and I can do this. But, you know, it, I remember yesterday I was at, um, my son had his first uh, football game, which I can't believe I have a football kid in the first place. I, we, 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 I said I would never let my kids play football, um, and now I have a kid that plays football. But, um, you know, I, was, I went to the football game, and, you know, I was like, okay, well, it's a two-and-a-half-hour game, and I still need, like, 30 grams of protein, you know, between this time window here. So I brought, you know, like a, a protein bar, and I brought, you know, some protein chips, uh, which, again, I'm not saying it's the greatest, you know, but when you're in a bind, you know, you need some quick food or whatever. Um, you know, those are, those are great things to have. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I make sure I plan my stuff, my snacks and things like that as I'm going along, because it's that mindset that I have throughout the entire place. Right. But the, the, the engine analysis is such a great one because, you know, the, the amount of gas that I need now for my body has substantially changed from what it used to be. Right. You know, um, if I eat 3,400 calories uh, when I was 220 before, I would have gained, you know, five pounds a week or three pounds a week or two pounds a week or whatever, um, on, on that. Um, instead, you know, I, I'm maintaining it, I'm becoming leaner and I'm gaining more muscle mass. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's such an incredible experience because your body needs that energy to continuously ensure and replicate the muscles that you have. And I, I think that a lot of people, when they're trying to lose weight, they, they don't recognize that, right. And they just try to shed it off as fast as possible. And, you know, if you want to come out of this successful, you know, long-term, it's a combination of dropping that weight, getting to where you want to be. And also having some form of muscle. And I'm not saying you need to be a bodybuilder or a power lifter, you know, whatever your goals are. If you want to look great with your shirt off or just be skinny fat, whatever it ends up being, right? You know, your ability to gradually do that as you're building muscle and then, you know, shed that that weight becomes substantially easier when you incorporate weight training. Yeah, I think it's good for you because even in, in our time working together within the past year, you've been 220 pounds twice. Yeah. In the, like, oh, my God. Like, it's such so different and i wish that we could show or like but it, it's so different and i think you know but you can you can vouch for that because you've been both do you know what i mean and you think well i'm 220 pounds so surely i should be eating the same amount of calories but you know being able to do it i've been able to see both sides that you've been there and done it and now you realize how your body works i think is again you know it's just credit to to the process and having done it and understand your body and like you said being able to refine it and um, I want to move on to some, I just know we're coming up the time. And I think the one thing that I will note is obviously, you know, we've probably covered nutrition, lifestyle, mindset, and body in this, but that sort of shows us how interlinked they all are. Do you know what I mean? We meant to be talking about mindset here. And I think we should finish off with like some actionable tips that, you know, you can use to improve your mindset. But, you know, like I said, we've covered mindset, we've covered lifestyle, we've covered nutrition and we've covered body. And that just shows how interlinked they are and how in tune that we are with them all. Um, so yeah, in terms of mindset and, you know, how actionable tips that you can do to improve it, I think the first one for me would be your environment. And again, this is sort of a recent thing for me. Last, last weekend, I was in London um, at a fitness summit and the fitness summit was awful to be truthful, but I got to spend time with two of my friends that I really respect in the industry that are doing really well, you know, they, they're coaches and they're mentors. But for me, being in that environment was more valuable than spending two days in a, you know, in a meeting room, listening to someone talk about calorie deficit and whatever else, <clears throat> which is great at some point. But for me, I value more time with these guys who I'm learning from them and, you know, learning from them, but also being able to see what's actually achievable. And like, you know, you obviously with everything, there's different levels and you, you get to a certain point and you're like, look at this person and you're like, Fuck, right, okay, well, they're there and how do I get there? So the environment thing for me in terms of, of mindset, and I think that's one thing that's cool about the group in terms of the clients and you guys, like that environment, you know, it's supportive, it's people on similar journeys and, you know, it's motivational and everything that comes along with it. So my first point would be 
your environment over to you yeah i think i think environment is is, is key um you know what you've been able to build with like a a, a very um tight-knit group of folks that that are unique very very unique, unique very unique we're all very unique people um you know and <laughs> and i think the the cool part about it though is that you know we all want each other's success in it right and i think the biggest thing that that helps me a lot is that positive reinforcement like from you or from the team or from the group you know like uh yesterday i shared something and everybody's commenting on it you know and they ask great that's awesome or whatever you know it's just you know in it having a, a, a group of people that are interested in the same thing that you're interested in and, and can help motivate you to be better. Um, I think is an awesome thing. I, I know Scott was asking questions like, Oh, Hey, you know um, what, what, you know, what do you guys prefer? What do you guys and gals prefer, you know, in your incline position, right? You know, it's just like th those types of discussions, you know, are things that, that you don't get really anywhere else in an interactive format. So that one has been um, really successful for me. Um, tips for people on mindset that has been, good for, for myself is is putting myself in a position to say i'm not going to skip a day because i'm going to go back a day right and and that is how i always think now like when i went on vacation you know i could have easily you know not worked out that week and just get you know made it a deload week or whatever you know and, and been just fine it would have been perfectly fine there would have been no issues with me missing a week but i didn't want to lose a week you know i wanted to gain a week and, and it's always about gaining a week for me, right? Um, when I went to Vegas, you know, I, went to, I did a, a thing for my, my father. I flew him out and, and we saw his, uh, his favorite band um, as a birthday present. You know, the first thing I did that, that so it was a three day trip. I landed in Vegas on Friday, Saturday morning, even though I, I'm, you know, we stayed up late, the, the hours were all mixed up and jacked, you know, uh, I was at the gym, right? Saturday morning before anybody woke up six o'clock in the morning, I was up, got changed, went to the gym. I love that place, by the way. It's so awesome in Vegas. I, I we got to go there sometime. It's it's like the most amazing place. I, I want to come over at some point, and and I think maybe we should just we'll just meet in Vegas. Anybody who wants to yeah. come, who's American based in terms of the client base, we'll just go to Vegas and we can go to that. Dude, gym. we're just gonna we're just gonna hang out there. Like it's, that's we're gonna camp there. We're gonna get a car. <laughs> um, it, it's like literally the 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 place that you'd want to go if you wanted to build muscle. It's like. Like the exact place it was, it's called Smash Fitness, uh, I think is the name of it, or um, something to that effect. Uh, it's in Vegas, but uh, um, you know, it's. Uh, but again, that that mindset of not wanting to lose a day or a week, um, you, you you can put yourself into that mindset. And here here's the thing that I always look at it is if if you're really struggling and you don't want to go work out, right? Just say, well, listen, I'm going to go there, I'm going to run for five minutes, and if I don't want to run for any more past that, I'm just going to stop and I'll go home. And your body, I'll tell you, it, it's like a it's like a light switch that, that goes on. When I when I get to Orange Theory, and I'm on that tread, I'm like, oh, I don't want to be here. It's so early. I'm gonna have to kill myself for an hour now. And as soon as I start getting on that tread, and I start to break a little bit of a sweat, my mind is like, all right, I, there's no more bullshit. You know, it, it's time. Like I I can't fight you anymore. I'm gonna go and do this. You know, and and it's it's literally a clarity moment where you're like. And those are the days that I just, I, I wreck myself. Like I, I literally just wreck myself. You know, it, it, I, I get PRs or do something different. Right. And, and it's, it's having that confidence in yourself that you don't want to go back a day. I don't want to go back a day. I don't want to go back a week. I don't want to go back six months. I want to continuously progress and move forward. And, and that's the mindset that I have every single day when I wake up uh, in business and everything else, I want to move forward. I always want to move forward. I don't want to go back a day. Yeah, I think I think I touched on this in the last one whenever we were introducing mindset that it's having that sort of thought process to think, okay, right, is this decision something that the person I'm trying to become would make? And if you have that sort of thought in the back of your mind that, okay, everything that you're doing, if it's a bit of, you know, resistance that your your mind is putting up, whether it's, you know, food wise or peer pressure or out for drinks or, you know, knock on the gym or whatever. Just take a second to to think right okay i'm trying to be this type of person this is where i want to be is this a decision that's going to get me closer to that um, and having that sort of in the back of your mind and to touch on what you said about the you know just going to run for five minutes i think i can't remember i think it was a podcast that i was listening to um oh it was a podcast on procrastination um i'll put the link in the description but basically the guy the guy who's always the expert he basically says you can do anything for two minutes and if you like you said if you go in and you do two minutes and you want to sack it off 
fair enough. But 99.9% of the time, you're going to continue with the task. And it's just about having that sort of like, okay, I'm going to try this for two minutes. I don't want to do it. And after that two minutes, like you said, as soon as you're on the treadmill or whatever it is, you know, it's it's game changer. Yeah, your, your, your body is capable of so much more. Your mind is is literally the the biggest barrier for all of this, right? And, and Orange Sear is a great example of it. They have these things where they call your base, your push, and your all out, okay? And your base is your normal running pace, whether, you know, it's five miles an hour, six miles an hour, seven or eight miles, whatever it ends up being. It's just your normal running pace. So you're, you know, you're getting some cardio in, but it's not taxing on your body. Your push is like, hey, I'm kind of at a little bit of a sprint speed. And then your all out is like, listen, I'm about to murder myself, right? And you can only do those for certain per periods of time, right? You have, you know, uh, your base, which is going to be, hey, I can, I can run this a long time. Your push, hey, I can probably run this for a couple minutes, but anything past that, I'm going to be be hurt, you know. And your your all outs are like, listen, if you go a minute, you're just you're just you're you're crashing on the floor, right? And you know, we in, in Orange Theory, they have um, thirty usually uh, very often thirty second all outs, right, where you're sprinting for thirty seconds. And uh, Coach Jackie is, is is one of my coaches I like there, and she's always like, you can do anything for thirty seconds, right? And 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 so when I'm running. I'm like, listen, I just want to hit that three mile an hour button so I can walk and catch my breath, but it's only 30 seconds. Like I can do 30 seconds and then I get to hit that three seconds, you know, three miles per hour to get myself down. I can do this. And so I just lock myself into it and say, listen, I'm not stopping until I hit that three mile an hour mark and you can do it. Your body can do it. It's your mind that is your biggest challenge. And, you know, for people that are just starting out or for people that have had not a lot of success with all of this. Again, start small. Um, you know, listen, today I'm going to go out and I'm going to walk 10,000 steps. That's my goal for today, right? Tomorrow I may go out and run and walk 11,000 steps. Or maybe I just do, you know, 10,000 steps again. That's fantastic. You know, or, hey, I'm going to incorporate some sort of weight training. And how do we even get started with that? We're going to get into some of those those great dis discussions uh, when we start getting into some of the other areas there. But, um, you know, just, just getting out and being active for yourself and making that change um, is, is really important. Um, and we'll get into, again, nutrition, we'll get into, you know, weight training, we'll get into all of these different topics that are going to be really important for your success. Um, you know, the first thing I would say, if you want to make a change right now for your mindset, download my fitness pal and start tracking your calories, everything you put in your body to start tracking. Am I saying you have to, to, to shrink your calories, whatever, start, 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 start tracking, make that commitment to yourself to start counting your calories and know what you put into your body and that's your first change, right? And the second is, hey, I'm going to go and get a walk. And and those are two things that you can make a monumental impact that are that are very minute on your day to day activity in life um, that can make a huge difference um, in your future. My Fitness Pal is a way of counting calories. You can basically just go in and add, you know, whatever you're eating. Count those every single day and see where you're, where you're at. Again, I'm not saying you should, you know, shave on certain things or whatnot, but just see where you're at from a food perspective wise of everything that you're eating. And I think it'll be pretty eye opening of what you're actually putting in your body versus what you thought. Um, I count all my food um, that I put in religiously. Like if I eat it, as soon as I, I get there, I'll add it right away. You know, it takes 10 seconds, 15 seconds to add the food that you're going in and in, in adding into once you get good with the, the program. You know, you can make that commitment uh, mindset wise today that, hey, I'm going to I'm going to focus on this and I'm going to do this. And after that, you know, everything else starts to fall into play. But have that mindset. Mindset is most important. Yeah, I think just to actually touch on that, you know, I had a client that has started last week and they started tracking their food. And they said, MS has been like, you know, once they sort of get an idea of food and what things are made up of, they, they looked at their sort of previous day to day and they realized that they could have potentially been eating like four and a half, five thousand calories because they didn't really have an idea of food. And even you just straight off the top of your head, been able to talk about, oh, well, it's 160, ca it's 160 calories and 24 grams of protein that comes over time of like getting, you know, to know food and down the line, it gets you to the place that, you know, like even with when you're camping, like, you know, exactly what you need to eat, but it's just going in with the. Uh, the willingness to learn about that. And the, the guy was like, I can't actually believe it. And, you know, you can think that you can eat healthy, which you can, but you can still massively overeat on healthy food. And that's still going to put you in the surplus. If your goal is weight loss, obviously you don't want to be there. Um, and I think your, your point to sort of probably wrap up on in terms of small changes, people go in and they can like flip their life upside down. They're like, I'm going to start running. I'm going to go to the gym five times a week. I'm going to do 15,000 steps. I'm going to track my food. I'm going to do keto. I'm going to do this. And then I'm starting tomorrow. And you're like, like, no, you're not going to do any of those things. You're going to do that for three days and you're not going to be able to handle it. Whereas if you go, like you said, I'm just going to track my food for this week and see where I'm at. 
judge how your body responds and then make adjustments. Or I'm going to walk 10,000 steps every single day. Perfect. I'm going to then the next week, maybe try and walk them slightly faster, whatever it is. But it's just that 1% better every day or every week or whatever it is. But the best thing that you can do for yourself is just start whatever, no matter what your goal is, is just start with something and then build on it from there. And like, you know, like you said, where we're at now is not where we started. Do you know what I mean? Like we've, we've come so far and even with my, my own training, like I'm not, you know, over the years, a lot has changed, but I've went through the process to, you know, I was doing X, Y, and Z based on the ability that I had, but also based on the time that I had things change, family life changes, everything changes over time that you get to a place that you just go, right, well, this is what I need to do to be in line with my goals and my lifestyle at the minute. Yeah. And, and, and again, those, those minor changes, right. You know, starts to lead and build into that mindset. I didn't, you know, understand macronutrients. I didn't understand ca calories in, calories out. What you know, weight training would have. All this stuff comes with time as you start to get into this, and as you have that mindset, right? Um, and and that comfort level it, with yourself takes time. Like I, I you know, I, I, Ben can tell you, you know, every week I'd be like, dude, my weight creeped up 0. 0.7. What is going on? Like I'm freaking out. I'm I'm going back to my fat Dave again. You know, and. And it's having that confidence in yourself and understanding what's what's actually going and trusting that process that I think is, is really good. Again, you know, wrapping things up here, uh, you can do it. If you're listening to this podcast, you've already taken the first step, right? Um, if you're already seasoned in this and you're, you're looking for new, 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 you know, tips and tricks, you know, we'll, we'll get into those for sure. But listen, you know, if you're listening to this podcast, you're already taking the first step into your success, right? You can do this. Again, it's it's a matter of looking at it both from a day-to-day -day perspective, I never want to move back. But if I do move back, I'm going to move forward twice as hard. Um, and it's, it's, it's about having that, that long-term mindset of this is who I want to be a year from now or two years from now or five years from now or 10 years from now or when I'm in my 60s or 70s. You know, these are things that you're doing for yourself to make yourself better, and you can absolutely do this. Uh, Jocko Willink has that, that, that saying, discipline equals freedom. The discipline every single day you know, to get up and to do what you need to do uh, for yourself to be successful in anything that you do, whether it's business, whether it's life, whether it's family, um, is is something that that gives you the freedom long term of being who you want to be, having the confidence of what you want to do, and accomplishing the things in life that you want to accomplish. And you absolutely can do this. You know, I you you may have failed many times, but pick yourself up. That's a good. You know, there's a that, that saying that I used last time. You know, the, your your rock bottom is a great foundation to build upon. And, you know, those are the things that, that you have to look at is saying, listen, I'm, I'm going to be successful this time. I'm going to work through this. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to start small and grow, uh, grow big. You know, those are the things that you absolutely can accomplish. I know you can do it. Uh, I know I can do it um, because you know, I've been through so many failures myself. Um, you know, pick yourself up and, and get started and just start small. Yeah, I think, again, you know, the one thing that I've realized since we've changed the hashtag on Twitter is the support that comes from that. And, you know, my, my first point on mindset was find a supportive environment. So if you're on Twitter or whatever else, the hashtag we hack health, the support that comes alongside that just from, you know, people all over the world, get involved with that. If you have any questions for me or Dave, reach out, you know, we're happy to help point you in any direction. And um, I'll link obviously, you know, our socials below. Um, but it's the belief that in yourself that you can do it and recognize, okay, yes, I feel, but this time I'm not going to. Yep. Mic drop. Mic drop. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yes. So thanks for listening. Next week we will talk about lifestyle. And um, as always, if anybody has any questions, you know, leave them in the comments, shoot us a message, whatever you need. Um, and thank you ultimately for getting this far. Yeah. Awesome podcast. Again, I've had some great feedback from folks. Keep it coming in. We love hearing feedback. That's what drives us. Um, you know, we hack health hashtag, uh, we hack dot health, uh, for our website. We're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on, uh, Spotify, we're on Apple we're every, podcast. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. We are everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> Ben's like, Hey, should we ever? So just like, sure. Why not? We're just, 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 go. <laughs> um, but uh, hopefully you enjoy the podcast. Uh, we'll be back again next week, uh, with another one on lifestyle and, uh, really appreciate everybody's time and listening to us. Uh, later. Later.